Robert Maddox. I'm proud to be here. I'm a real designer in real tech for PC Fun Fishing. I spent 20 years with Abel Garcia, and, and then after that I was with Ardent Reels, and now I'm with PC Fun. I'm here today to talk about real maintenance, cleaning, maintaining, and repairs. Reels are very expensive today. Hundreds of dollars for a simple baitcaster. Even for a spinning reel, you can spend well over $250 for a decent spinning reel. Keeping our reels maintained and, and problem-free are becoming more and more important. And I am going to teach you guys a ton of tricks and ways to maintain your reels. So even if you want to, if your budget only allows you to, to buy a, a fishing reel that's a for instance, a budget reel. I'm going to show you how to keep that budget reel going for years and years. The first thing we should talk about when it comes to reel maintenance is prevent problems. And then due to that, we're going to talk about the number one most important thing you can do and that you can invest in is a reel cover. It's that simple. For five or six dollars, you get a reel cover and it protects your reels. Not only does it protect it cosmetically, but you will protect your reels from dust because dust is the killer. Dust is what will cause the most issues with your reel. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. But a reel cover. There's two kinds of reel covers. There's the travel reel cover that you would use if you're going on a reel on an airplane. Protect your reels um, that are not on your rod, like that one is. Like this reel cover protects your reel, why it's on the rod. So the protection is to and from the lake. And that's important because if you happen to look outside today, there's a dust storm going on. And we'll talk about why that's important. When it comes to bait casters, we'll start with a bait caster. Simple bait caster. And does anybody know the most vulnerable area of the bait caster? The worm gear because it moves metal on metal and is exposed to the elements. The worm gear is by far where most problems arise. So the worm gear, as you see, sits right here. The shiny thing, let me get the big reel, it's easier to see. The worm gear sits right there. There's a metal worm paw, when you turn the handle, that runs up and down that gear, teeth on teeth. If you use <laughs> Cardinal rule number one, if you use grease in your worm gear, it's a mistake. Don't do it. Grease attracts dust, and dust and grease become an abrasive, and you will slowly destroy your worm gear. Even though the reel's maybe a year, 18 months old, the worm gears will start to wear out if you use grease in the worm gear. Do not use grease of any type in the worm gear. What happens if you do is as dust, lake debris, and all kinds of other things get caught up in that open worm gear, as it moves back and forth, it keeps pushing everything to the left and to the right. And eventually, you'll notice that your reel is no longer spooling up evenly across the spool, that you're piling up on the left or the right side. That's because it's dirty, it's filthy, probably because you're using grease, and now that's going to have to be serviced, which means removing everything off of this reel. Everything. Right down to every gear to get to that worm gear. And that gets expensive. So how do we avoid that? Clean the grease out of it when you get it if there's grease in it. Just get that grease out. And second, use a... Here we go. Use a viscous oil, a thick oil. If you look careful, you'll see how thick that oil is at room temperature compared to this, <laughs> which you can see is very light. Light oils are for ball bearings. These thick, which other words, what does that really mean? So there's different kinds of bearings in every reel, whether it be a, a, a spinning reel or a bait caster, right? High-speed bearings are the ones that need the most maintenance. That's the ones we're always concerned about. Nobody really cares about the low-speed bearings whose only job is to actually support the shaft, the drive shaft, or the spool shaft. 
right? They're low speed, they're under less stress. Uh, a drop of nice thick oil in those will last a long, long time. Because the bearing is low speed, there's nothing to force the oil out, which at high speed, as the ball bearings turn within the race, it kind of forces oil out of the ball bearing. High speed bearings need a lot of attention or they will go bad, which is the second thing that goes bad on reels. Does anybody know why we use oil in the bearings at all? Does oil in the bearings make the bearings faster? Anybody have an opinion on that? Or slower? Oil in your bearings significantly slows down the bearings. So you wonder, why the heck are we putting oil in our bearings if I'm slowing them down so much? If you've ever been in a swimming pool and walked against the water, that is what that bearing is doing when you fill it full of oil. You slow yourself down just like you slow those bearings down. So why are we putting oil in the bearings? Why are we slowing them down? There's only one purpose that oil serves, period. Anti-corrosion. We're only putting that oil there to prevent those bearings from corroding. And even though the majority of them are stainless steel, salt, dirt, and eventually debris that get in there, especially, again, dust, will pit the inside of the races. And, if the, and today's bearings are so precise that if the, pit, the, if the race gets pitted at all, you'll start to feel the performance difference. It'll be kind of grindy feeling, and that feeds on itself, and it gets worse and worse over time, until you finally bring the reel to me and say, I don't like the way it feels anymore, it's grindy. Well, yeah, because you have not protected the bearings. So where are the high-speed bearings? Real simple. Almost on every single bait caster, I don't care who makes it, doesn't matter. You have a handle side and a non-handle side. This side plate will house a bearing, as you see here. This is a high-speed bearing. Anybody have an idea how fast this reel, this spool turns when you cast on an overhead cast? 112 miles an hour. 112 miles an hour. And you've got to control that speed. Because if you don't, you're going to get a massive, massive backlash. So this is your first high-speed bearing. We put a drop of oil on it, a simple drop. But people say to me all the time when I do these, what, what is a drop? How much is a drop? That's a good point. Because there's really big drops and there's tiny drops. I always urge people to go out and get precision oilers. They're very cheap on Amazon. You can see that's a needle right there. If you squeeze that just enough for one drop to come out of that needle, that's a good amount to put on those bearings. Protect your bearings. Every one of these you'll see, whether they're viscous or non-viscous, are always with a needle applied to apply them. See, so this pin oil, wonderful oil, you can even get it here. It's very good oil. But you do not want to do this and then dip it and then put that drop in because now it's a swimming pool inside those bearings and you have not only slowed them down to a, a really a ridiculous amount, but now as you, <laughs> every time you cast, all that excess oil is blasting all over the inside of your reel, which again will attract more dust. So precision of application of oil is important. I get asked all the time, but what oil? What oil should I use? What is it? Number one rule, it doesn't matter. Just put oil in the bearings. If you want to be technical about it, go out there and get a fancy oil. Get a specifically made for bearings, fishing reel oil. Spend a lot of money to do that. Or just put oil in it, because that's all that really matters. Only thing I would caution you about is be aware of how thick the oil is you're putting in. This oil here is going to affect the performance a heck of a lot more than that oil. The drawback to that is, this will only have to be applied a little bit at a time, maybe once or twice a year. Well, this would have to be applied three, four, five times a month, a year, sorry, because it's so light. But you'll get way better performance than a light oil. Lucas makes a wonderful light oil. It's made especially for bearings. It's incredible. I use it in my shop all the time. I have nothing wrong with pin oil. By the way, pin oil is also Abu Garcia oil. 
uh, Abel Garcia bought him, and now the oil is the same. Highly recommend it too. Having said that, you can get Super Lube. This is a 100% synthetic oil. It's not petroleum based, not aluminum based. Uh, it is not molybellum based. It is purely synthetic. And it is a fantastic oil. You can see how much you get for like eight bucks. It's a lifetime supply for a bearing. And all you have to do is buy these for this in here. And wow, you look like a professional. It works like a charm. All right? So, oil in the high speed bearings. The other high speed bearing is usually, not always, right here on the other end of the spool. Again, one small drop. Sometimes you'll have a bearing in here protecting the pinion gear, which is in here. It's a brass gear. It's on every bait caster. Even every spinning reel has a pinion gear. And there'll be a bearing around that edge holding that pinion gear in place. So even though, as you see, there's no spool in there at all, that pinion gear is supported with pure, look at that, it's smooth as glass, because there's a bearing here holding that pinion gear in place. One drop, and then one drop underneath your tension cap, and you will be good for months. You won't have any problems at all. So, number one, biggest issue is always going to be the worm gear has to be taken care of. Two, the high speed bearings is important. Yeah, everything else pretty much takes care of itself. You don't even have to remove this if you're careful. You can go for a year, two or three years with the grease that comes in from the factory. You should be fine until so you have to bring it to me or to another tech to fix. Having said that, we'll talk quickly about the spinning reel. How do we protect our spinning reels? How do we keep them as smooth as that? Spinning reels are also exposed to the elements. Underneath that cap right there is your entire drag stack. That drag stack gets salt in it, oil, grease. It's going to get water in it because not all of them are waterproof. Most of them are not. Um, so there, if you know, want to know if your spinning reel is waterproof to prevent water and debris from getting into your drag stack, you have to remove it 100%. And you have to look there and see if there's a rubber grommet there, a seal. If that seal's on here, then that helps prevent water from getting in there. Your entire drag stack now is sitting right here. So that's a stainless steel disc followed by a carbon disc, a stainless steel disc, a carbon disc, stainless steel, and then a carbon again. When a fish runs with your line, you'll feel that begin to pull and suddenly it'll break and the fish will be able to run smoothly without breaking your line as the stainless steel discs all start to turn on the carbon disc, which is your drag, right? So when you go out there with this 2,000 size spinning reel, and you end up by accident hooking into a 30 pound striper, and he's taking your kayak for a ride as a tourist along Lake Mead or Lake Mojave or Willow Beach, as you're going down the river, you're gonna wanna have to make sure that that drag stack is working because it's the only thing keeping that fish in your lure on the end of your line. That's it. So, and this is easy, by the way. There's a little retaining clip in there. Just take a little screwdriver, pop that retaining clip out. Lay out the drag stack, stainless steel carbon fiber, or stainless steel carbon fiber, lay it out. Clean them with a paper towel. There'll be all kinds of black stuff coming off those discs, all kinds of debris in there. Clean it all out. Get it all clean, get it dry. Put it back in there in the same order, put it on, and wow, you've got a fantastic operating reel. Does anybody know what the other thing that will always go bad on your spinning reel is? <laughs> Two things. Well, you're right, actually. But the next thing is that you see here, this is called a roller bearing. Right there. That, your line goes over that, right? Your line runs. So when you cast, it goes over your line. When you reel in, that's what reels your line in. There's a bearing in here, right there. It's underneath there, and it allows this to, to roll with your line. If this did not roll with your line, every time you turn the handle, all you'd be doing is tangling your line up more and more and more. So this rolls, there's a bearing there. As you can guess, that bearing is exposed to the elements. 
it is always exposed to the elements. You're gonna, you leave that on the deck of your boat, on the back of your truck, somebody drives by on the gravel road, and that bearing gets smoked. Small screwdriver, and all you need, very carefully pull the, the um, bail wire off, very carefully pull that bearing out, it will be absolutely filthy. If you do not keep oil in this bearing, do not service this bearing, this will stop turning. It will freeze up. And it doesn't take very long. Because that bearing is not very big. The tolerances are so exact. And this will freeze up. You'll be bringing your reel to me going, and this thing doesn't work anymore. All it wants to do is tangle. I don't even want it anymore. I just throw it away. Well, it's a $200 reel. Well, it doesn't work. Well, it's just that bearing. That's all it is. Because this has to be taken care of. So, drag stack number one. That bearing number two. While you've got this off, right? Take your most thick, viscous oil, and you're gonna have a bearing here. If you look on this one, if you look carefully, you see there's two bearings on that drive shaft. See that? Two bearings. Why? Why do they put bearings on the drive shafts on the steering wheel? Anybody know? What's, what purpose does it serve? See those bearings right there on that one? Look how thick, look how thick that, let me, let me run it up right for you. There you go. Look how thick that dry shaft is, how thick it is, and how, how big those bearings are. And then you have a disc dry shaft with those little bearings. You see the difference in the bearings? Why? Well, as you can see, that drive shaft doesn't turn, so those bearings serve no purpose except for one thing. They support the drive shaft. So when you're fishing and you accidentally or on purpose with a 2,000 size reel, hook that 30 pound or 20 or as we know, even an 8 pound striper, he's going to take you for a ride. When you're bearing down on him and you're bearing down and that rod is fully loaded, you could begin to feel your reel begin to bind up a bit. It'll get a little harder to turn. Be like, wow, what's going on? That's because this dry shaft is actually bending. It's actually bending. You're actually putting a bend to it like this. And that dry shaft runs all the way through here to the very back of the reel right here. That's how far it runs. And there's a pinion gear it runs through, which turns your main drive gear, which makes the handle turn. Right? When you turn the handle, it turns the drive gear, which turns the pinion gear, which makes this whole whole, um, uh, let's see, rotor, I couldn't think of the word, it makes the whole rotor work, see, when you're really bearing down and that drive shaft starts to bend, wow, you will feel it because the entire reel is now compromised, and that's where you'll start breaking off teeth, he's not here right now, but I was talking to a gentleman earlier who had complained that he had purchased a $150 spinning reel, but he made a lot of noise, it clanked when he turned the handle, he had broken a tooth. There's a broken tooth in there. That's what happens. So these, these bearings prevent that from happening. That's why you almost always see two, almost never one. They wanna, that's the most vulnerable area where the bend occurs, and so it's only there for structural support. <clears throat> so take your oil. Now we want to bearing oil because we want to prevent corruption and just touch those a little bit, one single drop. Take your more viscous oil or your thicker oil, run it all the way to the top, put a couple of drops on the drive shaft, run it up and down, and that oil will work its way to a bearing, a very big bearing, located just below the rotor there. And guess what? You are done. That's all you need to do. Nothing else will go wrong. You don't have to take off any of these side plates because, as you can guess, there is very little space there. So when you take off that side plate, just know that there was all three gears in there in that tiny little space and they are, there is no room to spare. So if you don't know how they go back in or where the washers go, you'll be bringing it to me in a box. Which happens every week. But you don't need to do it anymore. Because trust me, you do that, you will have a reel that will last you while your kids will be using it for a long time. It doesn't matter what you paid for it, as long as you take care of it. Example, anybody know how old this is? Anybody want to guess when it was manufactured? Anybody know what these handles are made from? 
Those are bone. That's bone. This is manufactured in 1958. Take it. Turn it. Feel it. How amazing it still feels, 1958. Can we not still fish with that right now? Still cast with it? <laughs> yeah, they, we're kind of used to those big 95 to 105 millimeter handles now, aren't we? And that's 1958, and that's what care and maintenance will do. Your reel, can you pass it back to the guy behind you? That's what those reels, just, just basic maintenance, everyday maintenance. You'll have those reels and your, child, your children will be using those reels. It doesn't really matter what you pay for, as long as you take care of it. All right. Do you have any questions on on that part of my presentation? Any questions on preventive maintenance? Yeah, we lose in the bearing. So you're cleaning the bearing before losing it, or just That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. <clears throat> so most bearings, here's how you tell if that bearing needs clean. There's a trick to it. I mean, I now have a pencil. I should have brought a pencil, but. If you all remember the number two pencils that we used at, at school, right? Take a sharpened number two pencil. And why do we use a pencil? Because it has a point on it and it's wood. So you can press that bearing down on that wood without damaging the inner race, right? Then take that bearing. Let me back up. If you want to get all the oil, oil out and everything out of it first, that's, if you want to do that, and if you think you need to do that, you need to remove the bearing from the reel. I use a simple cap from a, a soda cap, a soda bottle. I put the bearing in there and I wash the bearing with um, a lighter fluid. And I leave it in there and then we put it in a jewelry cleaner that vibrates all night and then it leaves all kinds of stuff out in the, in the, in the middle of it. We pull them out, let them dry. We put them on the end of the pencil you hold it up to your ear and you spin it and you listen to the bearings. If you feel any grinding from it, if you hear anything coming from it other than the hum of the bearings, because when the bearings have no oil in them, they are super fast. They spin forever with no oil. They just go crazy and you can hear them. If it's not spinning, really spinning with no oil, then something's wrong with it. Okay, there's corrosion in there, there's something stuck inside there, um, they're warped or something's wrong with them. Get rid of that bearing, they're easy to replace. I think Apex 5 now or somewhere in about $14, maybe $19 now, they've gone up. But I wouldn't even suggest Apex 5 quality. Most reels you purchase today are in the Apex 3 category. You have to spend about $150 to $300 you get to the APEC 5 category. Um, so don't think that you have to get expensive bearings. Remember, because only the high-speed bearings, only ones that really need to be of quality is the high-speed bearings. Um, but thank you for asking me, because I, I forgot to mention that. You need to make sure if you're going to do that, clean all that stuff out. Lighter fluid works like a charm. It really dissolves all the dirt and grease, gets it all out of there for you. It's cheap and it's accessible. Everyone's got it. You don't have to have a uh, any type of volatile chemical in your in your garage or anything to get stuff out. Um, any other questions then about bearings then? Ceramic bearings. People ask me about those all the time. Should I go to ceramic bearings? What's the advantage of ceramic? There's two types of ceramic bearings. There's the fully ceramic, which is uh, ceramic. With bearings are actually ceramic in a in a ceramic uh, race. And then there's hybrids, which are stainless steel, where the bearings are ceramic. They run inside. Most of the reels that we deal with do not need ceramic bearings. I don't, I don't go out there and, and, and tell people to change. We have enough trouble controlling the speed of the bearings that we currently have. They backlash enough as it is. Bearings are just getting faster. The tolerances are getting better. But if you want to go to ceramics, I will replace them for you and put ceramics in. I recommend hybrids so you still have to oil them, right? Um, but they're sealed, so once they get oiled one time and then you push that seal down, that's locked in. You don't have to mess with them more. There is a ceramic bearing 
And this reel designed for PC fun, it sits right underneath this tension cap, right? You never have to oil it. It's sealed, ceramic bearing. The other two are Apex 5s, but they're German Apex 5s. Okay, so that covers ceramic and that covers that. So, once we get those important things done on the outside of the reel, then you can worry about um, cleaning the outside of the reel. There's a lot of products that will clean the outside of the reel. So, just a few of them. The one I use most in the shop is Pen. It's cheap, it's really effective, and it leaves a protective film over the reel. It's a little shiny, sort of somewhat of a silicone feel to it. But it does clean well. Old school Blakemore cleans real well. Um, it's a little more expensive, uh, but I don't like sprays, so I don't use it. Um, the sprays get all over the place. Um, when I use this one, I usually pour it into a, a, a uh, little spray bottle like this, so I can control it better. And you can get these anywhere. The thing that I use the most, especially for reels that nobody's touched for years, like Chuck English, who every five or six years brings me all his reels and they're just horrendous. This is a mixture of simple green diluted to a point where it's very effective against light, dirt, grease, and grime, and it does not harm any reels or any components of the reel. I usually, again, form in little containers like this, sprayed into hard to get to areas. <clears throat> of course, you gotta have you gotta have these. So go in and raid Mama's cabinet and grab all grab all her Q-tips because you'll need a bunch. I go in at least. Well, I used to go raid with my wife, but now she buys me my own Q-tips. Now you get to all those hard to get to places, and then you take your paper towel and wipe the rest of the reel down. I cut, I break these or cut them off in fours. It works perfect, and the reel will be left with a real shiny silicone feel to it that repels dust and dirt. Um, but those are the the actual to clean the exterior of the reel. This is what I choose. Um, this is the one I use the most, but this is for really tough stuff. And the Simple Green will get all that stuff off for you. The other thing I want to cover real quick, and the thing I get asked about most, and by far the most confusing thing that I deal with is grease, by far. Um, I've, I've heard everything from, well, I'm, I was told not to use grease in my reels, or I was told to use this grease in my reels, or I don't even understand what grease really is. Well, to be honest, grease is really nothing more than soap. That's what grease is. All greases have a soap base to them. They're soap. Then you add components to the grease that make it better or worse or different. But they really are just nothing but soap. Some better than others. So, let's talk about grease. The first, well, the first grease I'll talk about is here. This is simple pin grease. Buy it anywhere. Very affordable and it's cheap. As you'll see that it's a real blue color. Blue like this is almost always indicative of a petroleum-based grease. Right? Petroleum-based grease is better than no grease by far. But does anybody know what the disadvantage of petroleum grease is? <laughs> well, yeah, it does smell bad. It smells terrible. But it emulsifies in water. It turns white and it begins to break down. Years ago, when I first started tournament fishing in the 80s and, and early 90s, this was basically the grease that we all had in our trailers. And every, what, three, four months, five months, we had to clean our bearings out of our trailers and pack new grease in because they were always white. Grease was white. And, uh, and that's how you would lose a, a wheel going down the road. So petroleum is not the best grease for fishing reels. If you come to me and you say, well, I have, I'm a surf fisherman, and I, I wade out in the surf, or I have a kayak, or a small boat, or a canoe, or you wade streams, your rod, your reel, is going to be subject to a lot of water, sand, all kinds of stuff. Petroleum-based grease will break down and will not protect your inner gears on your reel. 
I don't use it anymore. This is Lucas. It's called Red and Khaki for a reason. Because it is red. This is a lithium based grease. Lithium. It's very slick. It's very effective. And one of the ways that you can test how really high quality a grease is, you take a little bit. Take a little bit on your finger. You rub it around. You feel. And then you can take your paper towel. It's gone. You won't even feel it. Good quality grease cleans up like that. It does not smear. It will not stay on. It's off. This is my preferred grease. I've been using it for many, many years. Obviously, you don't want to use it in a tub of this size. So you go out to a craft shop and you can get something like this to work with. Now, we'll cover how we apply it in just a moment. I like this grease. It is relatively water resistant. If you have salt water reels and stuff, this is great stuff to use. That's not the best. It is, it is the grease I use on 90, 80% of the reels that I do. This is simple stain lube marine grease that you can buy anywhere, any parts store, right? You notice the color here is different. Most grease is color coded. Red is almost always going to be lithium. This is aluminum based. Now, What's the difference between the lithium base and the aluminum base? Anybody know why it's important? Well, it's right here on the top. It says marine. It's waterproof. Water just comes right off of it. So today, in modern boats, every one of them sitting over there, if they're not oil bath hubs, are using... <laughs> and you can be like me and have a really nice brand new boat, and I pulled my oil bath hubs off and replaced them with marine grease. So. This is waterproof, it will not emulsify or whatsoever. So, if you're telling me you're gonna be out there in that stream, you're wading, or, uh, or you're one of those guys that wears uh, waders out there in the stream, or you're in a kayak or, or something else, this is the grease I'm putting in your reels. And you will never have to, well, it'll be years before you have to come back to me and worry about it again. It's super sticky, it will not come off, and the reason why it stays where I put it is because of how you apply your grease. So there's only one way that grease should be applied to your reel. And that's with craft brushes. Very, very, very carefully and judiciously. So what you simply do is you take it off, you dab this in here a little bit at a time, and you paint it on that gear. Right? The gears have teeth. Each between each tooth, you're going to paint a little grease. Not on the teeth, but between the teeth. All the way around. When you're done, you should not be able to see that grease with your naked eye. Hold it back here a bit. Look. You can see grease. It's too much. It's way too much. It will not stay there. No matter how thick it is. In the hottest days of summer here, if you're turning that handle at a high rate of speed, that grease is going to fling off and get caught. <clears throat> right inside this handle area, all the way around. So I'll make a perfect ring of grease. And I'll know that you or someone or the factory has applied way too much grease. You can see it, it's too much. Paint it in there, and it is plenty. <clears throat> grease is, all grease is subject to heat and cold to a certain extent. These are all, they have crazy uh, limits of heat and crazy limits of cold because they're partially synthetics, except for the petroleum, which is highly susceptible to the cold. So, but remember when it's really cold outside, if you're from Alaska, if you're from the north, and Iowa, Minnesota, 
you're not going to want to use a really thick grease because it's going to thicken up a bit in the cold. If you're an ice fisherman, I'm not going to give you this marine grease or even the Lucas because you're going to feel that you're, you'll just feel it. You'll just like, wow, what's going on? Because that grease is really thickening up. In the summertime, it's just the opposite. The grease begins to, mo to liquefy and it gets smoother and faster. And as you move it, more grease will fling off and create that ring of grease. So what do we do? If you are a cold guy, this is what I prefer. I really like Super Lube by New Gears. It's a white lithium, 100% synthetic, impervious to the cold. No matter how cold, that's, I don't know, it's way up there or way down there and way up there for heat. But you'll see it's white. And it's very, very light. It's very light grease. It's amazing stuff. Um, all my customers from the north get this grease. And they rave about how much, what a difference it feels in their reels. I don't use it so down here so much, only because of the heat. But I don't know why you couldn't. It really is amazing. Um, for what you pay for it, it's amazing grease. Love it. So that's basically the rundown in grease and why they're important to your reels and how you apply that grease. Do I have any questions on grease at all? We covered it? Okay. So we talked about viscosity. We talked about grease. We talked about cleaning the exterior of your reel. We talked a little bit about tools. These are your best tool and everybody's got them. All you need to do is for the best stuff is just go get some cheap little uh, craft, you know, and I guess you can get these anywhere, screwdrivers, and that's all you need. You will need a toothbrush. So if you have children, go in and grab one of their toothbrushes. Take it out to your shop, because now it's yours, which I think where this came from. And because um, you'll need it to get into those tough spots and that, when you have to deal with a reel that really has got a lot of crud on it. This is it, great stuff. I will give you one caution. These are schematics. There's probably 30 here of different reels. I just brought them. Don't work on your reel without having one of these handy. You really need your schematic just in case. If you put stuff back together and you realize you've got an extra washer and you're trying to figure out where the heck that came from, or worse yet, if you make the mistake, I told you about opening this up. There's simply a bearing there. It's really simple, right? But if you make the mistake of taking this screw up right here, there's a spring in here under pressure. And it's under a lot of pressure. When you take that off and you let that pop off, that this plate comes off, and that spring will bounce at least three walls in the room you're in. You'll hear it. Bing, 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 bing. And then you spend a couple hours on your hands and knees with your wife, in some cases, trying to find where the hell that guy's spring went. Do not open this. I'm just telling you, don't do it unless you know what you're doing and you know how to get that spring back in there because it is a bear, even for me, after 30 years of doing these reels. It, it's hard and I hate the service of it for that reason. So that's that. Oh, so I want to cover this. Who here has a boat? Okay. Or you fish from shore? Okay. What is in here? It's not cigars. How many times have you been on your boat and you had a reel start to squeal or squeak or you had a loose handle? And you're like, what am I supposed to do now, right? Put it away because you can't use it anymore, right? We're going to talk about squeal next, by the way. So, this is what I tell you to do. Go get yourself a tin. And inside that tin, you're going to put some oil a little grease, these little wrenches that come in all your new reels, this is a Shimano one, and this is PC Fun Dawa Abba Garcia. Little, you, it's got a little screw, this will take, tighten up your handle, it becomes loose. This will take care of your squeak, squawk, this will fix, it's got paper towels on the bottom for cleaning, and of course you have are right, Q-tips. You just keep that in your boat and you will be able to put your reel right back to work where it belongs. It's a nice, nice little thing to have. 
You ever have a, a baitcaster squeal? It's pretty annoying, isn't it? Do you fish baitcaster? Spinner reel? You don't get a lot of squeal from a spinner reel. But the baitcaster guys... So let me tell you how to fix that, because I know you want to know, and then we'll be done here. Um, let's see, I want this one. So brakes. How many brakes are on a baitcaster? Three breaks. That's a good guess. Lucky man. Damn pros. Your first break is your is your first break is always going to be your tension cap, right? The tension cap works on the spool shaft. So we pull the spool out. Boom. There's the spool shaft. It runs all the way through the reel right to that cap. You tighten the cap up. You put pressure on the end of the spool, right? So what makes that darn squeak? This particular reel, and many of them do, have what's called a centrifugal brake system. And that basically is those white things you see there are brakes that fling out using centrifugal force and they push up against that brake drum you see right there. As it fits in here like this, as that spins like this, they come out and press up against them. Real simple concept. Probably 50% of the reels have those. That's your second break. Could be magnetic, could be centrifugal. So, as, this, as these brakes are turning inside of here, if this is dry and dirty, and if the brakes here are dry and dirty, you're gonna have friction rub, and that is your squeal. Get a Q-tip. One drop of oil doesn't matter what kind of oil it is. Go into your wife's, go to her sewing room, grab her sewing oil. She won't even care. Put one drop of oil on there. One drop. Running around inside here like this. Get all that black and dirt and crap out of there. Take your spool, clean those little white brakes. You'll see a little black on each one of them that are activated. Clean that all off. That is probably 70% of white spin. There could be more. Inside here is your pinion gear. Shaft goes inside the pinion gear like this. If there's dirt and grease and crap in there, that's causing your squeal. <laughs> that's bait. <laughs> Simply take a drop of oil, put it on your fingers. Run it all over here like this. No more. No more. Just simply wet it with oil. Same side and clean them both. One drop on your finger. Right here like that. That's it. And your squeal will be gone, Mr. Owens. <laughs> I got one that's doing that. Yeah. Everybody seems to have one that does it. And you will be quiet like that. You'll be able to spin it like that and it will make the sound. It will just be amazing. That's how you get rid of squeal. I don't know why I tell people that because probably a third of my business is people who bring me squealing wheels. And I tell them, gosh, I have no idea what could be causing that. It'll take me a week to figure it out. Give me 20 bucks. I got one-ish rod guy who replaces eyelets. I've broken off micro eyelets. I've broken off... Uh, Craig. I'll give you Craig's number. A uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Cypress. Not Craig. Anyway, so, we no longer really use round reels much anymore, except for, what, uh, catfish, stripers. They're very powerful, very strong, very, very heavy. All brass, made like a tank. Uh, these are from the 90s, and they still work incredible. Um, do I have any questions whatsoever on reels, reel maintenance, and repair? No? I want to thank you guys for sitting through this with me. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being here at Bass Pro Shops in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.